that you have, an issue that you have, an issue that your neighbors have, an issue that a lot of people in Nigeria have, Pan-African, even an international problem. It has to be a scalable, a big problem that you're trying to solve. The second thing, you have to have found product market fit. So this product, whatever you're trying to do, needs to be 10 times better than the closest solution. Like, for example, do you guys remember the very beginning of Amazon? How we started with a rare books company? Okay, so before, before Amazon existed, before that first iteration of product, uh, if you wanted to find a rare book, you had to go online, call a bunch of people, oh, I'm looking for the King Henry III's first book on life or something, you know. And then you have to travel to go look for those products. That was tedious, time consuming, frequently you couldn't find what you wanted. So he built a platform where people who had the books and people searching for those books could find each other. That was 10 times better than the closest product. And then the last thing, it needs to be, you need to be establishing a unique solution. So it can't just be exactly like your competitor, just a different theme or a different color or a different logo. It has to be a unique product, a unique solution that doesn't exist currently. And if you're cre creating a, a product, it needs to be two of any of these three. It needs to be faster, cheaper, or better. What does that mean? So Dell is a solution. Compared to Mac, it's faster, you can get it more accessible, it's cheaper, and not necessarily better, arguably. Uh, and then there's Uber versus Taxify. Uh, I mean, Taxify here, at least in the Lagos, is, is faster and better, it's not necessarily cheaper. And then you have Ikea, which is cheaper and faster, but not necessarily higher quality. Okay, so now starting from the beginning. So you want to get to this point, you have a product, you define product market fit, it's 10 times better than your next competitor. How do you get there? So again, you're approaching the problem. You're not looking at the solution on how you want to solve it, you're focusing on the problem. What is the problem? So let's go around. A couple of those of you who raised your hands, can you tell me the problem that you're facing or the problem that you're trying to solve for? Anyone have, who has a company? I'm trying to solve a problem that... So mine is like uh, investors in corporates have a difficulty accessing millennial populations and tech populations in Nigeria. We have a solution that allows them to interact with those people. Anyone else? Yes? Um, what is, do we have a second mic? Yes, we do. Okay, so I hold that one. Mothers, um, um, the problem I'm trying to solve is mothers not being able to access affordable products for their kids. Okay. Okay. Um, the problem I'm trying to tackle with my offer is helping Nigerian manufacturers access both the African and global export markets, which is a major challenge to many of them. Okay. okay. And one more. I think you have something to say. <laughs> what is the problem you're trying to solve? Uh, problem I'm trying to solve is. Um, <laughs> you have a company. So the problem I'm trying to solve, solve is um, being able to provide uh, the problem of being able to find good um, quality developments. Okay, okay. So why? Because it's hard to find quality developers, they're not easily accessible. You have to build something you don't need to know where to find them, they're expensive, there are all these problems. And then, exactly, exactly. So you have to focus on the problem, not on your solution. And then, so you've identified the problem in the market, and then you need to figure out is this the right solution? Is this the right product that you're building? Does it actually answer your customers' needs? You do that two ways. What do the customers have to say about it? So you create a, 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 a solution, and you do market testing, you do customer surveys. The best way to find out if, actually, if people actually like it, will they buy it? Will they put money to it? Because a lot of people, your mom will tell you, oh, this is the greatest project the product you've ever done, this is the greatest thing. Your neighbor will tell you that, your friends will tell you that, but will they put money behind it? And you ask them for $50, for 500 naira, naira, will they give you the money? If yes, then you have a solution. If no, you need to start over. Uh, traction, traction, traction. So once you've found that, people are willing to pay for it, it actually solves the need that they have. Workable version one. Next, if it's not the right thing, so if that was actually not the right solution, just start again. You've identified the problem, it's unique, nobody else is having, nobody else is solving it. Just start again. Don't be too tied to a solution. 
And then next, so after you have found that solution, you found people who will pay for it, you build something people will talk about. The best marketing are happy customers. And also, a little plug, we have a high growth Africa summit. You can come here, talk about your product, get a bunch of customers. We also host about 150 investors. Highgrowthafricasummit.com. Okay, and so you've done all these things. You've found your product. People are really excited about it. People are buying it. You have your first MVP. So a couple of things that you need to remember. Don't work in isolation. A lot of times when you start building your product, you want to keep it to yourself. You're afraid people are going to steal the ideas. You're afraid about the competition. If you want to build something, you can't do it by yourself. You don't have all the skills. So you need to create a team. You need to talk about it. Don't give out your proprietary information. Don't be telling people you know, your secret codes, things like that. But talk about the general idea. Collaborate. If your idea is defensible and unique, don't worry about it being poached. And if it can be poached by you just explaining in two minutes what it is, you're probably not the right person to be building it anyways. And, and the next thing, so how many of you think right now that you need funding? Some people maybe know. Everyone else is cash flow positive? How many, how many of you have profitable businesses? Eh, okay, okay, okay. So, so that's something to think about. So, so I would encourage all of you to consider before you start trying to raise funding. It's not the end of the game. It's not the one of y'all. Why? Try to avoid fundraising for as long as you can because it prematurely dilutes you. Equity is wealth. Equity in the long term is what will make you long term money. Yes, you get an investor, they come in, they give you $1,000, $100,000, that's great. But in the long term, they're the ones who are going to be owning the business that you're working for. So as long as you can, delay. And how do you delay? Low cash burn rate. Consider timing towards, towards profitability. Talk to the people, whoever said their company is profitable, at the end, go talk to them, figure out what they've done. And then also, consider that the money is strategic. So don't just take money from anyone. Make sure that they can either help you out, they have the right connections, they have relevant expertise, they're not just going to write you a check and walk away. And if you're ready for funding, you think you're at the place, you have all those things, you have the MVP, you found product market fit, people are buying your product regularly, reusing it, regularly engaging with it, you go on LinkedIn, you email, VC, VC intake pages, message relevant investors. I can say the one thing that has been uh, that that deters me the most from even even responding to emails is when people message me and they have nothing to do with my thesis. Make sure before you message VCs, you do research and know the types of things they invest in. Don't be an early pre-seed uh, agriculture technology company and message a private equity firm that invests in cement. They will not respond to you and they will not be helpful. And then building a relationship. So this is one of the key, the most important parts. A lot of times it's frustrating because you know that you need to raise funding. And you go and you find an investor and it seems like a good fit. And you want them to write a check that day. And you're like, ah, I have a great idea. Give me money. And, they, and then they don't. And you don't know what happened. It's because you have to build a relationship. People, if I'm going to invest in somebody, it's because they've demonstrated responsibility. They've shown me that they understand the industry. They have integrity. All these things take a couple meetings. Maybe, and, and the diligence process is frequently between 30 and 90 days. So it can take up to one month to three months for that check to actually be written. And so here are a couple tips and tricks as far as how you can, in the meantime, build that relationship with investors so you will get the money. And the, the most important thing is ask for advice and follow up on it. When, when people, when you meet with an investor and you ask them how to build product, they give you advice and, you, and they see that you did it, that's a positive indicator. And the formal ask. As I mentioned before, who should fund you? Smart money on favorable terms. Keep your equity as much as possible so that is your long-term wealth. That is what is going to make you money in the long term. And strategic investors only. And now we'll quickly, quickly go through the pitch deck. So I can send you guys these notes afterwards. It's a lot of text. But this is the, the pitch deck 101. These are the key components that you need to have in order to write an effective pitch deck. Uh, compelling decks, concise, tell a story, 10 to 13 slides, big text, uh, or big font, little text. P pitch deck is meant to open investors' minds, get them excited about the general industry, tell them the high-level details. It's not meant to close immediate investment. It's not meant to tell all of the proprietary information. Don't include that stuff. 
and it's not meant to overwhelm, overwhelm them with too much information. Common pitch deck mistakes. Okay, the 10, 20, 30 rule, everyone make sure to abide by this, because if I get a pitch deck and there's too much text in it, I'm probably not even gonna look at it. So, so respect this, respect this rule of anything else. Um, do not belittle competitors, falsify information, be like, we're the only ones in the space, we beat out everyone else, I'm gonna question that. And if I go out and look in the market and you're wrong, then I'm not gonna call you back. So be honest, practice integrity, truthful facts, don't, use, don't have too many products, too many revenue models, focus on one simple product. Investor deck, uh, pitch deck outlines, so these are the, the areas that I'm gonna talk about quickly. And then I'll pause, does anyone have any quick questions on anything that I've gone through thus far? So huh? you, said, you said something about like, getting some advice and implementing it. Mm -hmm. So what happens when you get an advice and it's totally against your your strategy, your plan? Okay. I mean, do you go ahead and try to explain it? Or what do you do? If you, if you know that the advice is going to be done, because at the end of the day, I want to know that you know more about the industry than I do. You should be the expert, I should not be the expert. Maybe I know operations better, maybe I know, but your core product you know best. So if you can come back to me and, and clearly and concisely demonstrate, this isn't the right solution, X, Y, and Z is Y, then that's okay. But I mean, if I tell you something, like, yeah, 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 I'll, of course, I'll do it tomorrow, and then I don't hear from you. Yeah. Any other uh, vision, elevator pitch, one line summary combining your vision and product and the mission of your company. So I'm sure all of you have a five to ten word elevator pitch. It's something, whatever, however you quickly and concisely define your product. What's on your business cards, what's on your website, the landing page. Let's, let's hear a couple of them. Who wants to start now? Tell us, elevator pitch. Uh, my elevator pitch is providing power to build your own dreams. I thought it was um, generator that runs. Yeah, what is the product? Uh, the generator that runs solely on water, so you don't have to buy petrol or diesel. Interesting. That's, that's an elevator pitch. That's the elevator pitch. <laughs> I'm trying to read what is there. The mission of the company. So I'm going to put it wrong. You have to learn anyway. So, who else? Who else? So we connect uh, companies to talented and better developed in Africa. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, ours is that we offer a better way of coming to use water transportation. Interesting, what is that better way? Bracelets, among other things. We provide, uh, we provide a solution for cooperative societies to actually bring more of their customers and more. Anybody here? Yeah, yeah, this one. Okay. Um, Mr. Lenti provides gifts for student location and events. Yes? Gifts for student location and events. So is that like an e commerce platform that's for targeted for weddings or. Okay. Um, I represent Mercury Consulting and we make ordinary tires, puncture proof, and probably bulletproof. Okay, so keep it short, keep it memorable, don't use the word probably. Um, yeah, we are the Airbnb for events, we are the Starbucks of frozen yogurt, etc. Et Quick, concise. Traction. Demonstrate timelines and milestones today. So you, from the very beginning, frequently when people are first starting businesses, you don't have thousands, tens of thousands of users. You don't have crazy monthly growth. Maybe you have 20 customers that you're working with. Maybe you have 50 customers that you're working with. Dem pick out a one KPI, something that's growing fast every month, and then use that in your pitch deck. So can I have two people tell me of the KPI that they track in their business? K KPI is a key performance indicator, just for, for everyone. That's, that's something that grows in your business that you're trying to sell to customers that grows over time. 
our light track and the number of water transportation users as a uh, compared to the markets survival so percent rate. Okay, and so every month you have more increasing number of water transportation users? And no, it's usually between 1% and it drops to like 0.5, but the highest it's been, I think, is about 1.5. Of growth? Of no, what? Of the number of water transportation users as a function of total number of transportation users in the whole. Okay, okay. Okay, so that's kind of complicated. On your pitch deck, I would just include the growth in number of water transportation users you have monthly. That's useful for you, but as far as me looking at it, I want to know how many users or how useful is this project product, how many more people are coming on every month. Thank you. Um, we track average basket size, so it's an e-commerce platform, so we're trying to see how much of, um, because it's for used products, so we try to see how much we are sort of gaining traction with consumers, shifting culture to buying pre-owned things versus new, so we look at the average basket size and how much this And is that, a, is that, is your metric dollars or revenue, is it how big, like how are you measuring the average basket size, or so, number of products, or? So, so, so for instance, we started from about 1,000, 1,000 to, to 5,000 naira, and now we're about 22,000. Mm -hmm. So just seeing that initially people were, were a bit skeptical and then when, when they saw the quality of the product, mm -hmm. and stuff, so that's what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a useful metric to gauge because then you can figure out or determine how can I push more expensive products or how can I, how can I increase the number of products that they're growing over time. Uh, and then if, if you don't have a lot of these, if you're at the very, very early stage, press, partnerships, awards, Anything that you can put on that shows sort of credibility, validation from the market. Customer testimonials, quotes, number of people who have pre-registered for your product. Market opportunity. Define your market. How big is it? The Nigerian uh, fintech sector, there's $180 billion in transactions that happens between merchants and consumers every, every year. So that's the, that's the fintech opportunity in Nigeria alone. Think about what is yours. How big is your addressable market in Nigeria, in Africa? Globally, total market size, dollars, your place, your niche, how are you, where are you looking, what is your target, target demographic, customers, clearly define your customers. Is it people ages 18 to 35? Is it people 60 and above? Is it male, men? Is it women? Is it people who live in the city, in rural areas? Make sure you clearly under, understand and define the experience of your consumer because that's the only way you can really create a product that caters to them. As an entrepreneur, you're not creating a product for yourself. You're getting into the mind of your target consumer, and you're creating something that solves their core problem. So you really need to understand who they are and what they want. Uh, macro industry trends, insights. Define the problem. Who else is already doing this? How are they going about it? Why is yours 10x better? Is that excellent one? Product or service. Who's your customer? Tell the story of your customer. Our customer is Jane. On every Saturday, she goes to the cafe. She buys this, you know, whatever, whoever is your target person, make sure you understand that. Images and visuals, not a lot of text, make sure you have lots of pictures. Revenue model, uh, it should be simple. I see these, and so we sell this to this person, and then we have, you know, this back distribution channel, and we make money here, I make money there, you know. Don't be a fintech company that's also a logistics company that's also an agrotech, agri cement, blah, blah, blah. People love to combine business models, that typically that's an indication that you haven't really defined one product that will generate enough revenue to create a sustainable business. If that's the case, think about something else. Or think about iterating how, how else you can generate revenue. Lifetime value of an average customer, how frequently do they use you, how long are they going to use you, how much does it cost to get one person to use your product, to sell to one person. Uh, and also, it doesn't have to be that complex. Like, if you're if you are three months old and you do you give me a financial model that shows your ten year plan, I'm I'm not going to take it seriously. Business has changed. Just just give me an indication that you're really thinking about the long term of your business, or at least the next year. That you're really thinking about one specific revenue model. Marketing growth strategy. How, what do your customers use today? How are you going to attract them? Uh, what are the most important and unique channels? How are you doing things differently? Team, this is really important. And something that I didn't get from the beginning, 
is um, I thought, you know, I could just come out and do everything by myself. And then I realized I'm not a financial expert and I don't know how to build how to write code. And so I needed to find those parties in order to create a complete team. So yeah, you can get started at the beginning and say, I'm looking for people, I'm looking for this, that, and the other. You need a team. Don't try to do this by yourself. And if you don't have individual team members, get advisors. People who will back you, who have general understanding of the industry, give them 0.5% equity, or just have them do it because they like you. Demonstrate relevant experience. Um, yeah, so, so either you have direct experience in the industry where, where you're creating a business, or you have advisors or other people on the team who do. Financials, eh, three to five years, and eh, one to two is good. Uh, highlight each of these uh, total customers, total revenue, total expenses, EBITDA, earnings before. Yeah, this, I mean, you can Google that sort of stuff. Um, and competition, who, are, who else is in the market? Again, don't lie to me about competition. Don't say that nobody else is in the space or I'm the best person because they all suck. Make sure to define where they are and where you are. So, so I've seen sort of the crossover of these people focus on quality, these people all focus on market size, we're right here in the middle. So, so be honest, be genuine, because we will do our research as an investor, we will look, look and see who your uh, competitors are, we will do research on them, we will talk to them. We want to make sure that those stories are the same. The investment. Uh, make sure at the end of your deck, you state how much you're actually raising. If you're, if, if you're raising 100000 is it on a convertible note? Is it equity? Is it debt? What is the return profile? What are you going to be spending the money on? Make sure to think through all of these steps. And here are some of the, so founder salaries, are you doing it on sales and marketing, on the technology, capital expenses, equipment, are you a hardware company? Think through what you're actually going to be spending your money on. And then books. So these are some of the books. I'm going to take out their phone, take pictures. If you don't have this, this is important. These are some of the books that were so fundamentally important. Uh, business model generation, lean startup, a hard thing about hard things, how to win friends and influence people. That's so pivotal for investor relations, investor engagement, venture deals, and start a newsletter. So you can the slides be made available afterwards in yeah. case you want them. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the next thing, podcast that you should listen to, the Tim Ferriss Show. That he breaks it down. He talks to entrepreneurs. He goes through problems they've had with their business models. Just really important information. How to start a startup. That's by White Combinator. Um, African Tech Roundup. Twenty Minute VC. So you can understand the perspective of an investor. It's investors walking through deals. Why they made the investment. Why they didn't and product people, so you can really understand how to build a great product. And this is one of those inspirational quotes that we should end on. Oh wait, what did I just press? I guess nobody, I guess we're not using inspirational quotes. Okay, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate, our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is not our light, not, uh, or it is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. You playing small does not serve the world. So remember that. And if you have any questions for me, feel free to email me, maya at aggressive.co or info at aggressive.co. And we also do uh, this annual conference, High Growth Africa Summit. It's highgrowthafrica.com. Go on there. If you came to this event, I'll give you a free ticket, so email info and aggressive.co. Hook you guys up. And uh, the last thing is, is if you all or anyone that you know is a university, do, I, do we have any university students in here? No? Okay, never mind, not relevant. But if you, if you know anyone in, in university, we're building out a campus ambassadors program where we identify uh, developers and entrepreneurs from every campus so that we can give them swag and training and have them connect with their peers. So if you have any friends you know that are in university and are passionate about entrepreneurship or pas passionate about development, we want to help them and give them free stuff. So email info at aggressive.co and help you out with that too. No, you mean. Hey. No, only Polytechnics? Yeah. Like fire starting? Starting? <laughs> it's a question I asked. Like Yamate? No! <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Questions? They can be anything but passionate about the space.
Yeah. Uh, they have to be computer scientists, so like actively writing code, or entrepreneurship. Business code. Okay, so questions. That was a lot of stuff. I'll give you a moment to digest it all. Ask me any questions. Is that a question? Do you think we should, ask, we should let them ask questions now or after we interview you? So we can put all oh, the questions in yes. uh, All that question together. No, uh, Yeah, sure. Okay. So guys, who learned anything? So much more. Uh, um, who learned anything? So much more, so much more. <laughs> I saw people writing there who learned anything. Nobody's hand. Nobody's hands in the air, you know? <laughs> so who used to do who used to go about funding wrongly and has found new ways to go about it? I've learned something though, the Okay. So we're going to be discussing with Maya, trying to know about her personally as well as business wise. So you can write your questions if you have any now. And then you can gather more questions when we're done speaking with her. Naturally, it's our culture to give food. So we used to give rice before, in case you had it in mind that you asked me. That what, is it rice? Yes, it used to be rice. Jollof no, rice. Jollof rice. rice. Party jollof. Found <laughs> woman, one lady that would cook, an entrepreneur that would cook party jollof. Right. Who was there at January meetup? Yeah. <laughs> so we tried it with Aldo my curry and it was terrible. We had plates on the floor, we had rice, bowl, all those things on the floor. We now had people, like, you know how you eat it, like eating powdered jam, you now chill. So people were finding it difficult to even shake hands because like, you had like mm -hmm. stewy meat on your hand and you dabbed it, but it's not real, it's not that clean. So it affected networking to a certain extent. So we said never again. Wow. Networking food is small chops. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> so you eat small chops. There's chicken inside the small chop. So either we're eating chicken now. I've been. So we're going to eat. Naturally, we'll eat before the event starts. But a lot of you did not come on time. The people that came on time know themselves. You have cards. The people that came late have sticky notes. That's how you know. <laughs> we, we made sure of it. So we'll let you know what the sticky notes are for at the end of the event. And right now, I would invite the, oh, I invited you so. <laughs> the chapter director to take it off from here. Have fun, guys. I write your questions down if you have any. Um, please do not write your questions on the screen. Yeah, please. Alright, if you need paper, somebody can get it. Remember, I'm the same time. Alright, how many of you learned something from all my assets? Everything from all my assets. Learned something? Learned something? So you didn't waste your time? Yeah. Okay, good. So. Um, so Maya, one of the things that we do is we don't like to just talk about surfaces. We like to also talk about the challenges people face when you want to their success. 